Hey, this is Scotch Test Dummies. We got us our top five bourbons for beginners. Bart's eating some snacks. I got an oat cake in. Cleansing the palate. From Scotland. Let's test it. Test it! Top five style. <laughs> We had this one on our Ooh. slate to do for a while. True. First of all, We've, check out the shirt. Nice. It's like Polo, it. Scotch Test Dummies embroidered. Yep. We had this on our list to do for quite a while. Yeah. Everybody's got it posted now. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talked too about it two years ago. Yeah. So now it looks like we're copying. <laughs> we don't care because we're going to do it unique and different. You're going to get the Scotch Test Dummy style. We're going to get our version, baby. Get a little version. So this what is. is Yep. Top five bourbons for beginners. Okay. So you haven't tried bourbon or you've had a bourbon here or there. You've had a bourbon and Coke when you were a senior in college, 22 years old. Just to make sure it's legal and responsible. Mm -hmm. But you're now thinking about, I don't know, what should I start with? If I'm a beginner in bourbon, let's say I was just into wine, but now I want to try bourbon. And that's where we're coming from. So... I can tell you, you don't know my full list. This list is not necessarily what I think are the best bourbons in the world. They're not like exclusive hard to get. They're an entry level bourbon that I think sends you the message of what a bourbon is. Do you, did you come at this differently? Because we like to come at things differently. No, exactly. that's exactly what I looked at. Okay, there you go. All right. And we're going to do, for me, five, four, three, two, one, five. They're all what I think are beginner bourbons, but they're all going to be slightly interrelated. And I would say that as we move up the tier in mine, they're kind of what I think is probably, although you can take them all together, that as they go up to number one, that is kind of my favorite as we go up for beginners. Now, again, this isn't my personal favorite. This is what I think my favorite is to initiate a beginner. If I had a beginner sure. come to the house, this would be a great list. Okay. Does that establish? Yep. You like the hat? It's nice. I dig yours. Kind of goes with the moniker Black Bart. Black Bart, yes. El Barto. Black El Barto. Black El Barto. He's also a pirate. Um, I'll start. Okay, do it. Got Number mine. five, and I've got, it was an empty bottle I had mm. at home because it's so good. For $25, you can find Buffalo Trace bourbon, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Okay. Now, why your number five? Really, uh, just what a, what a bourbon is. It brings the cinnamon, it brings the vanilla, it brings the oak. A lot of the same notes we're going to find in ours. But for the $25 range, it's available everywhere. Mm. It's a great starter. Mm. Do it. All right, I don't have my bottle for this one because, and I should actually grab, it's going to be the bullet, hold on. Boy, I think I finished off bullet regular too. All right, mm. bullet 10. I thought I had the regular bullet, but I don't see it. And the bullet 10, I see the bullet rye over there, <laughs> but that won't help. Oh, the bullet 10. Yeah, the bullet 10, so you're going to see your regular bullet. The bullet 10 is a 10-year, right? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when they say bullet 10, we've been confused by a couple where they'll say a number, and then that doesn't mean anything but their recipe number. The bullet 10, flavorful. You get the oak in there, you get the sweetness, and... I think it's a little bit more refined entry level point for the 10, but it's a good place for a beginner, I believe, because it gives you a little bit more complexity than just the regular bullet. You're going to have a lot of people that'll be like, yeah, I had the bullet. It's good. If you're going to be trying out new, I'm saying try the bullet 10. A little bit more expensive, but it's not outrageous. And it's going to give you a little bit more of those stronger yet subtler flavors at the same time. And that's what I liked about it. It's both subtle with the bourbon strength at the same time and i think that's why bullet 10 is a great starter bourbon for somebody and that's why it's number five on my list mm. and it's spelled like bullet yeah it's kind of hard it, I'm, all, I'm never sure if i'm saying it right but i've heard the professionals call it by the way are we professionals 
Absolutely not. Not even close. All right. Our whole deal is, <clears throat> if this is the first time you're seeing us, is it's like you're sitting down at the table with us and you're hanging out. We tell weird, funny stories. Sometimes. We make fun of each other. Yeah, all the time. He makes fun of me more. And, uh, but think of this as if you're sitting right here and I was going to say, hey, try this. Go ahead for your number four because I know I didn't you're ready. See that someone was sitting right there. They're sitting in this oh, area okay. here. You can place it there. Eagle Rare, 10 nice year old. Nice call. Nice yep. call. Now, Eagle Rare, <clears throat> this one benefits if you let it sit for a bit. Mm -hmm. It'll sit for a bit. Open, which means open it up, try a little sip. If, if you open it and pour a glass, let it sit for a good 15, 20 minutes before you try it. After you've had a couple of drinks out of it, let it sit for a month or two <laughs> before you, and then go back to it. This is one that oxidizes a little bit. A it lot does. of people have had the same experience with it. It's a little bit different after a couple of months of getting some air. Right. The first time we both tried it, at first we were not overly impressed. Mm -mm. But luckily... On, on initial taste. Right. Yeah. Luckily like, okay. what happens is about two months later we're filming it. We're each looking at our notes and then I'm going, wow, this is way better than what my notes show and you're like same yeah and we always pour a little whatever we're we're reviewing we pour right. a little bit so we're sitting there tasting it again and it had improved although today we have some time. different things in our. i've got my number one do you i do so. not i have my number two so but eagle rare and this is a 10 year old as well you had the bullet 10 mm -hmm. uh and it's just on the back label with the eagle rare age 10 years uh, this is bottled at 46, 45 percent. Very affordable. 30, 35, 30, right? 35 dollars. Yeah, 30, 35 dollars. Yeah. Good bourbon. You're going to enjoy it. Um, but again, he is right. Take a sip first so you get the experience and then let it sit. Mm -hmm. Let the oxygenation happen. That's a real word. <laughs> I don't know. So that's your number four. My number four. Some people are going to balk at They're going to say it's not a bourbon. But you know it fits all the same rules. The Jack Daniels, what we call double barrel. Now I've got my opened one over here. I believe this is my unopened one. Well, this well, is the single barrel, barrel proof. Go ahead. This is for beginners, right? It is. But this is why I'm going to explain why this mm. is on my list for mm. beginners. Mm -mm. See, okay, you're calling foul, but I'm going to tell I'm you why. I'm calling because the comments are going to come in. I don't care. I, don't care. <laughs> I know you don't care. So we're going to explain a couple things because I figured with what, the beginners. Well, what we're about Jack explain. Daniels? The old number seven? Yeah. It's good. It's quality. But I'm going to get to that in a second. I'll okay. explain why I picked this one over that because I did. I think saw I, your. I saw some of your list, so I was waiting for that one to come out. That's good. I figured you would pounce on this one. <laughs> this one was almost designed for the pounce, but I'm going to get to why it's on here for the beginners. First, let me explain that Jack Daniels fits all the United States rules for bourbon. Mm -hmm. All right. It's at least 51% corn. It's using a virgin oak barrel, mm -hmm. first fill. Charred. Charred. All right. And they're not adding anything else to it. So it fits. And age two years. Sorry. Age two years to be called straight bourbon. Mm -hmm. Then... They have what they call the Lincoln County process, all right? Also makes Tennessee. it a Tennessee yep. whiskey. They take charred maple, charcoal basically from maple tree. Is it maple? Sweet maple? I forget what they call it. it I think it is. It's sugar maple. maple. Sugar maple. Yeah. They make the rick structure yep. and they burn it and make the charcoal. Yep. And then they let it trickle through for a final kind of finish. Mm -hmm. But it still counts as bourbon. Some people tell you it's not. They're wrong. It is, but they prefer to call it the Tennessee whiskey. All right. Here's why I say this is a good entry. It is a little bit more expensive. Uh, $49.99, I believe. 70. No, mm -hmm. about two of them. Not for $49.95. You didn't. All right. Well, maybe I'm crazy. All right. So it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Is that your main criticism that it's so expensive? And it's barrel proof. It is barrel proof, but here is the trick. My wife is not a whiskey fan. Not at all. She likes wine. She always tells me she likes cheap, sweet wine. And she says, when you buy expensive bourbon, make sure you buy me some cheap wine. Done. We were having a movie night. I poured some of this for myself. And she literally said, wow, that smells really good. So she's seated just to my left and says, that smells really good. 
And I told her, would you like to try a little bit? Because this has a little bit of what I call a banana cream pie flavor okay. to it. And she was like, huh. Now I told her, I'm going to walk you through it. And I walk her through a quick tasting. Again, she does not even have a whiskey palate. So I tell her, you take your first little sip. I'm, I'm, may, I'm almost wanting to move this up on the list as I'm explaining this stuff. Because <laughs> I tell her, you take a little slip like you're almost inhaling and you just bring a little bit in and let it mix with the saliva in your mouth. She does it and goes, ooh, I do get banana. She was amazed. It was the first time she got some of the notes that are subtle. And then I said, now we're going to add a drop of water. Now I happen to use a little dropper. I use this one exactly. And I said, now you're going to do the same thing but with a drop of water. She brought it in carefully again because it does have that higher ABV. The ABV on here is 64.1. It's very high. That makes it 128.2 proof. So she brings it in light again and goes, wow. I then added a little bit more water and I kept stepping it down. And then we finally put an ice cube in. And she took a little bit more and she was like, this is something I could drink. And again, my wife is not a whiskey drinker. So, this might be a bit of a bold stance, and I may take a little bit of fire for having this on my bourbon for beginners. And it makes me think I should have moved it up. But this is so flavorful with the banana cream. I've even had people come over here and I go try this because they're familiar with Jack Daniels. They're like, okay. And they love it. Hit me. Tell uh, me what the people are going to say. That is a great story. I'm you got some, you. Okay, you got some valid points on that. That's why it's on there. There is no way I would put a $70 barrel proof bourbon in my bourbons for beginners. For a beginner. That's I can see what you're saying. And I may and, well, okay, take and some And $70 barrel proof Tennessee whiskey. That's what I like. In my bourbon for beginners. You know why though? Maybe I, you should, if you were going to air boldly, you should just down number seven. Erring boldly doesn't mean you don't make a mistake. If anything, you're talking about not erring boldly. That's a bold move. That is. All right. That's what I'm saying. And so I erred. Yeah. If I've erred, I've yeah, erred boldly. Yeah, yeah right. you actually erred more boldly yes. than just the number seven. That's what I'm telling. What he's talking about is I have a catchphrase that says, if you're going to err, err boldly. I erred boldly. He doesn't I've know what it Nate, means, though. I do. I coined the phrase. I made it up. You coined the phrase. I did. Who else has said, if you're going to err, err boldly? Nobody. Nobody. I made it up. You go. <laughs> with your safe knob creek knob creek single barrel or no not even the single barrel just the knob creek knob bat. creek would have been crazy <laughs> you can't put knob creek single barrel now i will that. tell you though I, I was i was back and forth with knob <laughs> creek well actually at number five i had I, put, I pulled in the buffalo trace and i about had the henry mckenna henry mckenna 10 year that's a good call bond. that's a bottled and bond they're they're that's close yeah 50, 100 proof, uh, the Knob Creek, uh, small batch at 100 proof. This is a $35 bottle. Very affordable. Yeah. Uh, delicious. Did very well in our shootout, mm -hmm. blind shootout. Mm -hmm. uh, great bourbon notes, a little bit higher proof than what we've seen with, or what I, on my uh, Buffalo Trace and the Eagle Rare at 45%. Right. Um, great flavors. I've gone back to this. This is since our shootout. We split bottles, and uh, it's half gone. With, with all the whiskeys and, and bourbons that I have, I, I have a hard time not killing that bottle. I'm with you. Um, before I was ever initiated into the whiskey world, meaning we started our show, and we started doing some scotch tastings, I actually had a bottle of Narb. 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 <laughs> about spit my whiskey out. <laughs> some Narb. Some Knob Creek. Narb. What, narb. What, what was that? What's that I mixed with? I don't know. Narb. <laughs> I don't know what that would be with. But I had it, and, and this is the exact bottle. Not the, this isn't the bottle, but yeah. I had this exact same bottle. And I would, I would come to it for special occasions or when I wanted to, you know, sometimes even like sad events, and I would just sit down and, and have some solemn time and, and have a dram. So I agree with you. It's perfect. It's a good quality bourbon. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it and it speaks bourbon. Yep. Very so, good. Very yeah. good. Rich bourbon notes yep. with it. I wouldn't disagree with you at all. <laughs> Did you ever share some with your wife? Did she get no. a, get banana cream pie? No. Mm. 
There's nothing better though, just to go back to mind, I had a neighbor come over and I didn't tell him anything about the Jack Daniels, what I call double barrel. And he goes, you're gonna think I'm crazy um, and I don't drink a lot of whiskey, but I'm getting bananas. And I go, yeah, I'm like, I was like, yeah. And that's why it was, he was so excited that he got a note and then he thought he was nuts. And I was like, that's exactly what I get. Sorry, I went backwards. Yeah, sorry. We're still on you. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. my wife is not a whiskey drinker. Right. She hasn't really liked anything I've had her try. Really nothing. But the one that most or least displeased her was the Bushmill 16, and I would nowhere put that anywhere in my top fives. Hmm. Just because she liked it. Wow, of course, that's a, that's an Irish. Yeah. Yeah, just throwing that out there. Okay, interesting. Hmm. You want to say more? No. Nope. You're like pausing and leaving this out here. and You didn't catch my little slam. Oh. I, I said I wouldn't include the Bushmills in anywhere near my top fives of anything just because my wife liked it. That is not just because my wife liked it isn't why it's on. <laughs> I know. You brought yeah, up a got, couple yeah. examples. Sure. The, the <laughs> neighbor. Out there, it went, you uh, were, it yeah, like, I'm with you. I'm with you. It wasn't the only reason. Yeah, you, yeah, had, the you reason had some I, good examples. Yeah, the Jack it's was good. in there because of uh, kind of its approachability, even in its strong flavor profile. So, but... Um, for, you want me to leave this up there for your number three? No, for my number three, please pull up what you call the handle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maker's Mark. It's a half gallon. Not the 46. Not the 46. Not the cask strength. Not the cask strength, which prior to our blind 16 bottle bourbon shootout. Go watch that. You will learn as much as we did. Um... When I had Maker's Mark, I liked their cast strength version. All right. Then we did the blind shootout. We had 16 different bourbons. We had high end, we had middle, we had low, we, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we did them blind, double blind. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to ruin the whole thing, but I'll just tell you what this does for me. This blind, I didn't recognize, and it came in as, it's a weeded bourbon which means it's got still the 51 percent corn but it's other primary grain in there it's heavily weeded and it made it soft and subtle and delicate and for a lot of the bourbons we were trying sweet, sweet for a lot of the bourbons we were trying blind it had this transverse this you know there's this which is strong and american and powerful and then this subtle strength of America and I don't it feels like America <laughs> it's, it's red dipped wax boom they jam it in there and it just had this featherly light flavor profile that that seemed deep and rich hmm. and extremely affordable I think I saw this half gallon on sale for $44 probably yeah all right and you can probably get because yeah, the 750 is normally $24 yeah extremely affordable the the delicateness and and i'm going to preface some of what we're doing here a, again this is something that as you try these out or try them blind a little bit or try them on your buddy's blind and see what you get we like almost anybody else will a lot of times judge the bottle by its marketing or maybe even by its price and when we do blind tastings i love it because all that's stripped away I don't think you judge. I don't judge well, on the I, bottling. I don't try to, or, but I think my it, brain is just preconceived yeah. notions. I mean, I, I try to go to in open. Or not? Yeah. yeah, I try to go in open, but uh, I think the I think sometimes the brain is influenced. And we we were drinking blind. We had a Pappy in there. We had a Blands in mm. there. Elmer T. Lee. Elmer T. Lee. Um, Weller's we had, Twelve. Yeah, we had some really good, and, oh, and this is good too. But it was so informative for me mm -hmm. when we did the 16 bottle blind shootout. And this rose and it shined a beacon and it seemed like the transverse of a lot of the other bourbons we were trying and that's why it's number three on my list. Mm. Nice. Number two, Elijah Craig, small batch, 94 mm. proof. Mm -hmm. And that did real well in the bourbon shootout as well. And this is just a really good, it's gone from a 12 year age statement to a NAS, non-age mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody online reckons 
is like eight, nine years old. Right. Um, now, it used to say 12 on the front, right? It used to say 12 on the front. Then it was moved to the back. You've got that handle. Here's the handle. Yep. All right. After we did the show, I went and bought this. Well, we, well Whiskey Scout found it. Sure. Whiskey Scout's a guy that helps us procure whiskeys from around yep. the region. So back here, it says 12. Yeah, and on this tag, it says 12. Um, you know, and we haven't done a versus head-to-head -head on these, but I'm going to leave this up here, and you continue a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Elijah Craig. So, yeah, we done the 12-year. This is your number one? A while what? back. This is number two. Number two. Um, we did the 12-year a while back. Um, and I remember it, it was okay. It was average, I felt. Mm -hmm. um, you do a lot of these and you think, that's well, kind of average, whatever. You put it in the blind shootout and it excels. This was one that when, when matched up against some of the others, yeah. uh, even the, the current, not the 12-year-old Elijah Craig, but the current non-age statement, mm -hmm. the one that's supposedly eight. eight to nine years old, really shown when you went in there blind with it against 15 other bourbons. Uh, great bourbon notes, you know, the cinnamon, the caramels. Uh, the oak, the vanilla. Uh, you well, have not seen my list. I'm going to join in now with you because my number two is also this Elijah Craig. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have this sitting down there. And you're right. This, to me, is bourbon. It mm -hmm. is the oak. It's the caramel. It's the vanilla. It's the strength. It's like Americana. And it was this. I'm just saying, it feels like it. Like it, a shirt. Yeah, like with your shirt and my hat. And it was this in particular. America. 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 Yell America. <laughs> the other guy. It was this compared to the makers where I felt like they were two sides of the coin. And the flavors here are amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I scored this lower the very first mm -hmm. time I tried it. Yeah. I gave it an 83. Mm -hmm. And I even took some hits. And if you, if you go watch our review, you say something about the shootout and stuff, and I and you don't think it'll do very good in the shootout, and I say, oh, I think it's going to. On that, just that tasting that we had then, I was like, it's really got mm -hmm. a lot of those full bourbon-rich flavors. And I said, I think it'll do pretty good in the and shootout. Pick it and you picked one. it out number oh, one. Sorry. Well, it kind of ruins if you're going to go watch oh. it. But go watch. All right. It was... Uh, Okay, well, let's just move in. Are you ready? This was yours. We've talked about that. Yeah. My number, number two. My number one. We've already Bart already hit on. Leave it. Leave them all up there. Leave them all up there. Okay. Maker's Mark. Now, we reviewed this individually. This is thought, your number one. This is my number one. We reviewed this individually, and I thought it's okay. It's average. Nothing mm -hmm. special. I don't know what everybody thinks is so great about it. Right. We put it into the blind shootout. Shown. Now, we did four brackets of four. And in the fourth bracket, these two were up against mm -hmm. each other. And we both went back and forth tasting. Which one? Do we like this one? Do we like this one? Which way are we going? I settled on the maker's mark. And and you settled. You did. Yeah. And you settled on. You, took, you take the Elijah Craig in bracket four, and it moves to our championship. Yes. In our championship, I choose the maker's mark. You choose the Elijah Craig. These two are just great examples of yep. what bourbon should of a of a corn or a with some rye in it and a weeded bourbon mm -hmm. there's two things i learned in that bourbon shootout that come to beginners okay one is you don't have to hunt no. for great bourbons nope they're on the shelf right in front of you right and the second thing is don't pay exorbitant prices for secondary market uh -huh. stuff for the we had a van we had the twelve year Van Winkle in the shootout. The twelve year of the Van Winkle. We had the Wellers twelve in there. We uh -huh. had Elmer T. Lee. We had Blanton's. Uh -huh. What what rose to the, the top? Woodford Reserve. Elijah yeah. Craig and Maker's Mark. Yeah. And uh, the and they're put out in quantity and they are high, high quality. Mm. And that is one that's reason. That, and that's what I'm drinking, Maker's right. Mark. I got Maker's Mark. And I've got this. I've You've got, got the, the back year, 12-year 12, mm -hmm. 12 age stated Elijah Craig. Mm -hmm. and, and what are you thinking? Oh, I love it. Let me accept <laughs> this, too. Hold on. Yeah, let me try yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This feels like the softer 
transverse of this. Yep. And that is a little spicy. It is. Very rich. And I, I love rye. I'm a big rye. So when there's some rye in the mash bill, I tend to gravitate toward it. Now, we haven't gotten to my number one yet. I'm going to get there in a second. But it's worth talking about. Everything Scott said here is, yes, you don't... I mean, if you want to go out and search rare bourbons and find stuff that's high, expensive, I would never buy stuff at a crazy price on the secondary market. Great bourbons are available to you for $35. They're on, and you can go into any store, any liquor store, Pick and you can find these two bourbons right and here. And you're going to be doing great. Yep. Now, $25. Completely. Now, my number one is not foreign. You can leave these up. Leave them up. Because my number, my, my number one. I know what you're You know what it is. It's in the can't. family. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's what I'm doing because it's part of the whole. I've knitted together a tapestry. <laughs> okay, this is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It's 68 percent. Now this one's a little harder to find now, but back here on the shelf you got one that looks like it's in the same kind of coffin barrel. The new, yeah, the new bottling. All right, new bottle. Yes, and uh, so it's got a high, high. Proof, but I want to explain why I've got this on for beginners. Yeah, please do. See, you sound critical there. I, uh -huh. hmm. I have this on because this is what kind of first stood out for me with bourbons. Mm. I am a Scotch leaner. Scotch is a whiskey, but it follows all the Scottish rules to be called Scotch. When we first had this, I tasted it. And it was, I literally, both of us went, wow. Mm -hmm. It was an experience. It was an explosion. This bottle alone, you can spend time with a bottle where you want to try it neat, which is almost overpowering. It's, a, it's like a sensory explosion. Wow. And then you can add some water to it and bring it down or sip just a little bit in while you got a lot of saliva in your mouth. And then you can try a whole bunch of ice cubes, which cools it. And you keep saying that. I know. I don't think it, it means what you think it means. Which part? Explosion? The saliva in your mouth. Sure it does. <laughs> that was a movie quote. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> and when you, when you change it and, and watch it move and shift and, and let it water down and then come back to it neat and then just a, a couple spoonfuls of water or maybe a drop of water. This is whiskey that you can play with. You can literally play around with it and maybe even find where your sweet spot is. Sometimes I'll go to this and I'll drink it neat. And when I drink it neat, I sip just a little bit in. Other times I will throw an ice cube in and pour it over ice and let it cool and, and, and mute some of those flavors. And you can just do so much with what we call the bottle of wow. Prior to the bottle of wow, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I was mediocre on bourbons. I just didn't feel they had the depth or the swing that I would get from scotch and even some different Irish whiskeys. And when I tried the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, it like kicked the doors open and it, it blew them open with dynamite saying I'm bourbon and here I stand. Okay. That's a whole reformation mo movement there in our 500th, uh, 500 year anniversary. But that is why I had to put this on there. I know it's expensive. It can be hard to find. Don't make looking for it part of the journey. Don't start with what I'm listing as my number one. Maybe you want to try some of these or some of the earlier ones I've mentioned. But just know that, that this bottle of wow brings a full experience with it. And that is why it, it's on my list as number one. I, I debated not putting it on there because I know it's a little harder to find. I know it's a little expensive. I know it's super, super strong. So you decided to put it in the list for beginners anyway. You just heard why. And I think it's valid. <laughs> I think it's valid. I will agree with you uh, when I had the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for the first time. Now, I had the, to me, the George Stagg, the full strength George Stagg, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, was a good example of what a bourbon's supposed to be. This one as well, and, and I've had a few people try it. I don't think it's for beginners. I mean, I mean, you know, you brought it in here. Like you said, it's hard to find, it's expensive, and it's right. barrel proof. 
I put those. Is it a, is it a damn good whiskey? A damn good bourbon? Yes. Uh, it just is it among my favorites? Yes. Did you say bung? Is it for my? <laughs> is it for beginners? Yeah, I don't know. But Maybe. See, see, this is what made me go wow. Yeah. This this is bourbon to me, and it stayed bourbon to me. Um, and I even think it's why I rated this so low when I finally tried it because I was. I mm. think in my mind I was comparing it to this, and yeah, that's sure. not a fair comparison. No. Well, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's not, yeah. though. I mean, you've talked about, like, if you have a 30-year-old scotch versus a 12-year-old scotch, do you expect them to be the same experience? No, right. exactly. And I learned a lot, but this is the one where I was like, holy... I mean, I'm not kidding. We filmed it, and I you had told me, oh, my God, we gotta we got to film this. You bought the first bottle? No. Didn't you buy the first bottle? Well, yes, but we were, that was when uh, your wife was out of town, my wife was out of town, I was Ooh. grilling steaks. Remember, I went and bought those great, huge, you like, two inch on thick. Them. You grated two parmesan inch thick on steaks. and let it melt. And I had picked that up, and it might have yeah. been the Bullet 10, even, was the other one. I think you're right. And we started with the Bullet 10, we're like, okay, yeah, it's a good whiskey, yeah. it's a good bourbon, Which nothing is wrong with that at all. List. Yeah. And then we opened up the Elijah Craig, first time we'd and ever both. had it, and we were both like, holy wow. shit. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and it became, we literally call it the bottle of wow. And I mean, that's, that's, and that's why it, it, if it was, this, if this video was about, do you want to know what bourbon should be? That would be number one. Well, shouldn't this be though for beginners? This is for beginners. I know, which is right hints, here. Hints. You can go to any store for right. 25 bucks. Number three, number three on my list. So as they're walking through, they're trying to bullet 10 on mine and going, okay, yeah, yeah, I got that. Then they go in and they do that Jack Daniels double barrel. And then, yeah, but then they're walking through and they're like, oh, look, Elijah Craig Grill proof. <laughs> the dummies were talking like, oh, my God, it's burning my esophagus. <laughs> this isn't for beginners. <laughs> what the? Ah! Ah! <laughs> These bastards. <laughs> no. There you go. I don't, that's I don't my know. Take. I don't mind. Very the good. No, I, I love it. Very good. That's among my favorite bourbons. And you can still oh, readily find it. Is it again? I'm, I said I'm I'm mung. Mung. Oh, I keep hearing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm hearing. But. All right. But no, you can go into it. So you can go into store. any liquor store, though. You can find these two right here. You can find Eagle Rare. You can find Buffalo Trace. You can find Knob Creek. Yours it's a great, it's a yours great place findable. to start. Right. You're, you're right. And I, and we do agree on, on several. I'm just saying as you go down the path, bottle of wow. All right. Now we got to do our catchphrase. Scotch it, you Scotch guy. Cilantro. Dummies. <laughs>